Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to be showing you how to put together the square double slider card. You can turn this into a quadruple slider, you could have just a triple slider, or you could have a single slider. So you can really adapt this. I'm going to be showing you the full version, so I'm going to use the additions as well. So we're going to end up with a card like this one here. But I wanted to show you these ones here. So this one is, I guess, the most basic. It does have the additional die here from the other die set which is the happy birthday and I'll show you that in a moment but that to make the whole card this is how it will look. Um, I've used some of the new papers from my woodland paper pad along with the stamped images here and then you just pull out the sides again this one's very basic just to show you really how it all works. I've got this lovely pattern paper here but you can stamp hidden messages here. You also have all the space on the back along with your stand so these ones stand really nicely but you could just have one pop up here or you could add another one here here, so you have the three and you can add another one here and then it does display really nicely on the mantle or on the windowsill, side table, things like that. You just have it closer to the edge and you can pull that one down as well so all four of them would be displayed. And like I said, stands up really nicely and you can just slide in the sides. There's also this one. This one's more simple but it is using the addition so you've got the scallop detail on this one along with the happy birthday again. One of the scenes from the paper pad and then this one, I've kept the sides quite basic, again, just to kind of show you what you can do with them. But I've got the happy birthday, special friend, have a mice day. Again, all of that space on the back stands really nicely and all slides together. And then this one here, it's pretty similar to that one, but just with a different setup. Well, I guess actually it's got a similar scene there. <laughs> I had lots of fun making these. And then you just pull out the sides and you can see I've extended the scene there. There's foam inside this, so you do have a little bit of, you can put a little bit of dimension on the side panels, but I would recommend, you know, just really stamping on this, just in case you did get anything catching as you slid them in. But like I said, these are stuck on top and it's working okay. Again, you can add mats and layers to the back there if you want and just slide in. But this one here has these dies. There's two dies here, which would give you this layered tree effect. And I just love the way I've got the little deer poking his head through the trees there to come and see his friends. And this one again, happy birthday. I've also made a very thin frame on this one. So it's almost like a beveled kind of edge to it. And then you can see I've extended that scene again. Just really enjoyed these ones. They've got such a nice presence about them when they're displayed and they fold up really nicely. And also, one other thing before I show you how to put them together, I've got this one here and it's using the additions from the circle die set, which will make the circle slider, which you will see me share in the video. And that's this one here. And again, you can do, or oh, actually, hang on, I'm just looking. Now I've got, yeah, that one, I can grab that one as well. That's the shaker. You can see how I've layered up all of this foliage which comes in the circle edition set and you'll see all that in more detail and again just pop out the sides there as well so I've combined with this one and also it just shows that you can buy just the additions dies and the stamps and not buy the slider dies and you'll be able to create these kind of cards so it's just a really nice tunnel diorama style card you can see I love the little badger in there and I've added nouveau drops onto the uh, sprigs there, you've got the owl up in the tree, and then you've got all the space on the back, and again, that all folds. And I do have a tutorial um, for these kind of cards as well on the channel. So let's get back to this one here. I'm gonna show you how to put it all together, and then we're gonna add the additions onto the front, so we're gonna end up with a card like this. So this is the Woodland Folk Square Double Slider die set. We've called it Woodland Folk because we've launched it with the Woodland stamps, but it is just a double or quadruple or single slider card. It depends on how many you want to add, but that's all of the elements there. You'll see your main mechanism. This is your stand, and then you've got your mats and layers for the front, and then these are the side panels. This is a tab that you need to be able to attach them to the mechanism, and that's another layer there as well. But this one will also coordinate with the additions, and these are the trees that I'm gonna be using you can see the scallop detail there but you can also this will work on its own and like I said it will create things like this and I'm going to be sharing lots of other cool kind of dioramas aperture cards using this die set as well so first of all you want to cut yourself two of the mechanism pieces here so you'll see the die will cut these slots so they're tracks for this long strip to run down which I've realized I haven't die cut so I'll do them in a moment but here is the large one so it's easy to see, you can see it's got the little slots in there. So cut yourself two of those, along with two of these long strips as well, which I'll do in a moment. Then for your decoration, now what you could do, so you'll see here is you've got your 
you've got a large and a smaller die. If you cut your cardstock using the large white one and then cut your image using the smaller one, then you will have a white border. But I'm doing this one a little bit different because I want to have this kind of raised beveled frame. So what I've done is I've cut the main patterned paper there using the largest square. I'm then going to attach that to the same size again because this is a paper I want to make it stronger so I'm going to stick it onto there. But if you're starting off with a piece of card at the beginning then you won't need to do, obviously do that, you just need the one piece. So that's going to be the front of the card. Then the smaller one, I've cut one because you want that to go inside. This is going to be what we attach the mechanism onto so that they don't rub against each other. So that one you'll see is smaller. And then I've die cut another one exactly the same size for the back. So whatever the size the front one is, you want the same for the back to be able to attach the stand. And then the one in the middle will be slightly smaller. It can also be the same size and I've done that in other tutorials and on other cards here that I've made. I've just been playing around just to kind of see how it all works and it works either way. So if you want to just cut three in that size, you can. But if you do want to just conceal it in case you go, you know, maybe stick it slightly higher on one side and it might poke out, then just go with that slightly smaller one. So that's those ready. That's the stand. And you'll see there. So it will all go through your standard size die cutting machine. The, um, the longest one is this stand. If you've got extender plates then use them but if you don't then I would just use a little bit of low tack tape to tack it in place and then run it through so far and then shift it along your plate and run it back through to cut the other end. But I've had no problems. I've used it without the extender plate and with and it's been fine. So you'll then want to cut yourself. So this one's going to pull out from the right hand side and you'll see you've got here You've got, I'll just pull them all out actually, it'd be easier. So you have your largest one, which I've used there to cut the green out. Now you also have a stitched detail that's separate. So if you just um, grab some, again, washi tape if you want to have that stitch detail, pop it in like that and then run it through, you'll get that stitch detail all the way around. You then want to cut this one here, in my case I've cut it in the white. You want two of each size if you're doing double, three if you're doing a triple, four if you're doing a quadruple, or one if you're just going to have one pop up. But you'll see there that one's die cut, so that's going to go over the top here. I've then got these two that I've cut in blue, so we'll, and that one is going to go over the top like so. So I'm going to get those three stuck down, so I've got something like that, and I'm, and I'm also going to stick just that onto the front there, and I'm going to get my two strips cut as well. So I've got that stuck down, and I've got the side pieces ready there. Then we want to grab the mechanism, so you'll have two of these, and two of these strips here. So what you want to do is you're going to just weave it, so you're going to go under both of these tracks. So just under and then come out the other side and then again under and just come out the end there. If I just put my fingers you can see exactly so you just want that strip going underneath these two and then just bring it up to the edge. The reason I say to do this is because that way you know you've got it completely straight. Now you can use liquid glue or red tape. I have showed using red tape on the craft stash video that I've done but I'm going to use the liquid glue um, as long as you're very, very light with it, very sparing, you don't need much at all. What's going to happen is you want to just, just wrap these around. You don't need to pull them tight or anything like that. Just let them fold around wherever they choose to and it's going to stick on top of this. So all you really need to do is add a little bit of glue in this section here. And what I even do is just kind of rub over it. That way you know you're not going to squeeze anything out and just lay that down over the top. And then you can pop a little bit of glue where you know that's going to sit on top of that one as well. And make sure everything's nice and straight. Okay, and then you're just going to add some glue all the way along. Again, very thin amount, all red tape. Again, I'm just going to spread that out and just sit that down. And just lay it down so that the edge of this piece sits perfectly over that strip. So that's all stuck down and now you'll see when you pull it how it slides along the track. So you want to repeat that with the other one. So again I'll just show you 
just weaving it under again. So go in from the outer one, under, and then under, and then come out again at the other end. Make sure you've got an equal amount overhanging. Bring it right up to the edge, and again just fold it over like so. And you'll be able to see where you need to add your glue. If you do get any glue coming out the sides, then use a rubber glue eraser. Eraser rubber? You know this one. <laughs> this you can get in most craft supplies, and Craft Stash has started selling their own as well under the uh, basic section, so I'll link that one. But it's, it's really handy, so that will rub away any glue. But also, use your powder from your anti-static buddy. You've got them in the little bottles as well, and also some corn flour will work. But I can see there I've got no glue, but you'd be surprised. Just move it and just check there's nothing there. And like I said, just rub over lightly or use your powder there, and that'll take away any stickiness that there may be. And then, now this one, so when we stuck this one down, we stuck it on the left hand side of this mechanism piece. So for this one that's going to come out from the other side, you want to move that along or just turn it around. That's probably the easiest option actually. Let's just move that back up again. So just make sure it's on the right hand side. So that one was on the left hand side, this one's on the right. And again, you're going to add your glue. And then I'm going to stick this one lay it right over make sure you've got equal amount at the top and the bottom it will line up with the tracks and you want to make sure it's straight that's the key with this is making sure and again it's nice and straight like so now whilst that's drying i want to have this tree effect so i've just got all different backgrounds cut here from where i've been making all of the samples but i want that color because it's the same and using the smallest of those dies make sure you've got the rounded edge facing you know in the direction you want it because for that one I cut it facing right whereas this way I want it facing left and then all I did is I cut back into this piece again so I just kind of chose like the scene that I want now I want more of the tree and less of this area so I just brought it up a little bit higher yeah I'm going to do it there it's the same as before I'm just going to run that through my dye machine now I have this piece that will sit perfectly on top there so I'm just going to very lightly add my glue to this. You do want to make sure that you do get it right up to the the ends because you don't again want anything catching. If you've got any double sided sticky sheets you might want to do that. This is just giving you another idea on ways to decorate the sides. I actually will have lots more inspiration because I can start to use other elements from other collections. For the launch I just show it all with the newest product but um, there's already lots of other things for example the makeup collection that I done I've got a really lovely idea to use that with this double slider die set and then I can just let them all fall where they need to and then I'm just going to dust over that just in case any of the glue has oozed out a little now I have my panel that will pull out from the left hand side and then my panel is going to pull out from the right and then you'll see how that's going to kind of look when it's open. So next what we want to do is grab the, so you'll have these two left, one slightly smaller than the other with the largest one and I'm going to use the panel that pulls out from the left. You could stick this one down first, it really doesn't matter. And then you want some foam tape. Now I've purchased these strips of foam from Amazon and they're really good, they're perfect for this project. So if I just remove that one for the minute, you're going to lay your foam. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go right to the end, you can see these strips don't, I've got little gaps there, but that doesn't matter. You're going to add your foam. Make sure it's clear from the panel there, you want that to be able to move. Flip it over. And again, you're going to add the strips there. Now, if you don't have these thin strips, I'll show you a way that you can make your own. And I've shared this many times. I always have a roll of wax paper in the drawer next to me. And then I buy the inexpensive foam tape. And you can just stick it on here. I'm not going to use it on this one because they're a slightly different dimension. I think this is actually slightly thicker than these ones. 
the excess off there and then you can cut this any width you want. You can see there I can cut myself some really thin strips like so and then because you've used the wax paper you can just release the bottom so you can now just you know measure that trim it to the length that you want and then peel that off and stick it down. So that's another way to make your own foam strips. So I've added the foam to both sides there, make sure I've got it in the right orientation. So I'm going to remove the release paper and make sure I've got the larger one. And then you're just going to sit this in the centre of this square. Just try and get an even border and make sure it's straight. That's again the key. That's that one there. And then I'm just going to take the release paper off. And then with that slightly smaller one, or the same size, like I said, it doesn't matter. You might find it easier with the same size because you've just got to mirror, you know, match it up to the one below. But this one here, I just want to make sure it's concealed within that base square that I've just cut out. That's just going to stick over the top, like so. Now this is where you can start to decide whether you want to do a single slider, double, triple or quadruple. So this would be the single and you could now pop your pattern paper on the top and if you're going to have it you know pulling up from the top then you would have you know that effect and I will be sharing some of these styles and once we add the stand it will you know it stands up perfectly and then you can just slide that one back down but we're going to add the double so now that's when I would bring in this one and we're going to add the foam again in the same places that we did before and then just take the release paper off like so and now you're going to sit this one again in the same place now if you look underneath here you can see you know I can see that one inside where I would need to line it up but as long as you keep it so you've got an equal border you'll be fine and again just try and get it as straight as possible like so I've taken the release paper off the top there so I can't push down on that bit until I put this on so I'm going to do this one now and then this one you're just going to lay down so it literally covers everything and matches with the base. Okay, and that's everything concealed and then you can pull out the sides. Okay, so now we can add these pieces here. So in the addition set, we will have all of these dies. There's some more in there as well. But what I've used is the square that I used to cut this I've popped that in the middle of it. Okay, run it through your dye machine and you'll get this. You can see there already how that's gonna just be brilliant for a real, I've, I've got an idea to do a very deep tunnel card with this and I think it's gonna look lovely. And then you have this one here, which is this larger one. So you just wanna run that one through and it will give you this effect here. And this will sit perfectly behind that one. So all you need to do is, I'm actually gonna run the glue yeah I'm going to run the glue along the top here and along the bottom here you don't need much to keep this in you know to hold it in place and then this will fit perfectly so I'm just going to line that up with the bottom like so and then just drop it down and it will sit along the top there if you want to put foam in between the two you can but I'm going to put foam on the top now and you'll see that's going to be slightly raised up in front so I can pop the deer and everything behind. So now I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use one of the strips here actually. I wonder if that will fit. Yeah, I think I can get away with that so I can show you this you know, actually being used. So I'm just going to lay that one down over the top there. Get the release paper off and get that one stuck down. You could put the acetate sheet behind it to turn it into a shaker card, but I'm just going to have it with that dimension. Then I've got that very thin frame, which I think just kind of really sets it off and frames it, and it just ties it in with the white on the sides here. So I'm going to get that one stuck down, and I'm also going to start adding in all of my little friends. So
And that's everything stuck down. I just think they're so adorable. I love the little mouse there. Next with the stand. So if you want to go over the score lines, I like to go over them sometimes. I haven't on this one, so we'll just fold them. But what you need to do might help if I show you. So you're going to have the tab at the end here. You see there's a smaller tab. You want to fold that so it's a mountain fold. The next one will become a valley fold. Then another mountain. And then finish with a mountain. So you will have that shape there. Okay, and then if you just grab your glue and then just attach that to the tab, and then like so, and you can fold it all flat. And it's a nice wide stand so it can hold, you know, the size of this, especially if you do end up adding the extra two. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to add my Kalau glue. To the to the side where the tab where you where basically where the side that we've just joined is the side you want to add your glue to because then it's hidden and then I'm just going to flip this one over. You could add your more mats here and have your message on the back, or you could have your message on the stand. So you've got plenty of space there. Just again lay that flat. Make sure you've got an equal amount, and just give that a minute to dry. In case now you'll see when that is expanded it will stand the card up and then the sides just slide in and you have that gorgeous card and I have to finish it off with my glossy accents if you've watched every single video of this launch then you will know what's coming because I always add the glossy accents so I'm just popping a little dot on their eyes and then add just a very very I'm not even squeezing I'm just using the excess that's still on the end of the nozzle, just a little bit there on the eyes. If I just hold it up, you should be able to see when it catches the light. There we go. Isn't that lovely? So that is how to do the square double slider. And I'll bring back in, that was the other version there. So just a slightly different colour green and a slightly different arrangement. You've got this one here, which doesn't use any of the additions. It just uses the main die. It's that one there, which uses obviously those two that are um, of the additions. This one here just used the Happy Birthday additions, and that's just got all your pattern paper. And then that one there has used the scallop detail again with the Happy Birthday. I love these two together. I just think they look like the the best of friends. <laughs> they really do. And then again, you can see how that one slides out. And the circle ones. If you've not seen the video, these are just some of the ones that I've made using the circles and I'll link that one up here as well because so I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope it's made sense of the die sets for those of you that have purchased I can't wait to see your versions being shared over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page if you haven't joined go and join full of inspiration and lots of lovely people over there and it will all be linked in the description box below and I'll be back again very soon with more fun tutorials thanks for watching bye